started. Let me press record. Okay. Welcome everybody. I'm so, so excited about tonight's Zoom. You guys, Cheyenne is just absolutely incredible. I know so many of you guys follow her um, and I'll let her tell her story here in just a second, but I'm just absolutely just so excited for her to share with us tonight. Cheyenne, we appreciate you so much squeezing us in so last minute. You're seriously the real MVP. Um, I'm trying to find you on here to unmute you. I did it. Oh, got it. Do you want to go ahead and just jump in and just tell your story? Yeah. So, hey, y'all. I'm Cheyenne Knox. I'm 20 years old. I'm a presidential diamond. Um, I joined this business about two and a half years ago in high school. I was a senior on my Christmas break, and I just came across my upline posting on Instagram on the Discover page, saw her talking about this business, and just took the leap. Um, I really didn't have a vision at all when I started this. I didn't even know that we sold more than wraps. That's all I thought we sold. Um, and I honestly probably thought Ruby was like the top rank in the company. Like I was just like that ignorant, but I just knew that, you know, if my upline was able to be successful at such a young age and make such a substantial income so quickly that, you know, she was obviously doing something right. And what she was doing was working. So I didn't really ask any questions, but I'm also not green at all. So it makes sense. Um, I literally just got started. Um, and there was a $500 Ruby bonus at the time. And so I just jumped in, ran for that Ruby bonus, had no idea what I was doing, but I just was willing to ask a million and five questions. I was asking how I got there, you know, what I needed to do, what I need to be doing more of, like how I could, you know, just how I could get there as fast as she could. Um, and then I went Emerald in my fourth month, Diamond in my fifth month, um, three days after I graduated high school and earned that $5,000 bonus, which helped pay for you know, almost $1,000 of school supplies and textbooks for my first year of college. I paid all my tuition in cash. Um, I took over my car payment from my dad and was paying all of my own bills. Um, I never had to take out a student loan for school. Um, 10 months later, I went double diamond and then was bringing in $5,000 a month and was able to completely pay off all my tuition um, from the beginning of each semester in cash. And then I was able to go triple diamond three months later. And then I went to presidential diamond three months after that. And so ever, you know, because of it works, I've been able to you know, purchase a car and pay it off in cash. I'm debt free at 20. Um, I had a six figure savings account and I've just been able to do it, you know, in a way that not many people get to do it this young. So. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. Okay. So did I catch that you said you were diamond by the time you graduated high school? Did you say that? Yes. I, I went diamond in May, which was five months after I joined. Oh my gosh. That's so incredible. Okay. What is the, what is like a piece of advice that you would share um, with someone on here who maybe also is very young or maybe just someone who's just getting started and just is super unsure of themselves. I know I couldn't help but notice you said that you didn't really question what your upline was telling you to do. Like you just trusted her and just went for it. So what would you say to someone that maybe, you know what I'm saying? Just is, is either super young or just very unsure. Yeah. So when I joined, I was ridiculed pretty badly. Um, I was in high school. People in high school are not very nice, especially when you just do something different. And, you know, I got literally mocked every single day. I got talked about on social media. And that would be my biggest advice for people that are younger in this business is you've got to stop caring about what people think about you. At the end of the day, no one is going to pay your bills. No one's coming to save you. No one's going to do anything for you. Like you have to do your own thing. You have to pay your own bills. You have to grow up and be an adult and do those things for yourself. And they're not going to be there when you get a pink slip in the mail or you can't pay your car and it's going to get repossessed. They're not going to be there and pull you out of the hole that you've dug for yourself. You're going to. And so when it comes down to people having stuff to say about you or people posting negatively about you, or maybe your family doesn't support you, maybe the people that are in your immediate circle don't support you like you thought they would, don't let that keep you from where you're going. Because I honestly, I always say this on Zoom and I swear by it that I was ridiculed more than anyone just because I was so young. And then I had to go straight from college or straight from high school to college where it didn't get any better. Um, you know, people all those people are blocked now because I was willing to push it out and not care about what they had to say about me because where I was going was so much more important. And because I had got started super quick and I was asking my upline every single question and I was willing to work, I saw my work start producing results. So therefore I was super confident about what I was doing. You know, at the beginning, it's really hard to be super confident in something when everyone seems to be belittling you and making you feel embarrassed. But you know, I was just so confident in what I was doing. You know, I saw what it did for her and I was like, okay, we're no different. Like if she joined this business and was young like me, there's no reason that I can't do that too. 
And so I just had that confidence from the get go of just, I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you say about me. And yeah, I'm human and yeah, it hurt my feelings, but I never let that stop me. And so maybe you're not young and you're just kind of unsure, you know, cause you just joined this and you're like, well, I don't really know. Well, I didn't really know either. Like I was in the same boat as you two and a half years ago, starting from ground floor. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I was willing to know, like I was willing to fail. I was willing, I mean, guys, my time hop does not do me very well sometimes when I see the stuff that I used to post when I got started. Or sometimes I come across somebody that I messaged and I'm like, how did I go diamond in five months? I really don't know. But it was just because I was literally straight up ignorance on fire. I failed so much, but I also, you know, through all those failures that I learned from, I was able to succeed so much more. Oh my gosh. I literally am laughing so hard that you said your time hop doesn't, doesn't do you very well because I feel the same way. I look at my time hop and I'm like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm like, my pictures have come so far. My posts have come so far, but I feel like, like you said, it's such a good reminder that we don't have to have it all figured out from the beginning. We don't have to be perfect. Like there truly is something to be said about growing through the process. And I just love so much that you hit on that. I thought that that was just amazing advice for everyone where you said that not like no one's going to come to save you. You've got to be willing to willing to fail and willing to learn. I just thought that was so, so huge. Um, okay. The next thing that I wanted to ask you about is just, you know, you mentioned that, you know, you were, you're, you weren't green at all. So you were okay with not having all the answers and you were very trusting of your upline, but what would you say to someone that feels like, okay, but I have to know everything before I start. Like just those people who feel very paralyzed when they get started. Um, I love, I feel like you already hit on it, but I mean, I feel like so, you know, I think it's really important to really know how you learn best because I don't need to know anything. I don't need to know, like if a new product comes out, I don't even need to know like what's in it. I just need to know that I have to sell it. Like that's just the way that I am. Um, you know, all the new promotions come out. I don't even read the rules. I'm like, I'm just going to do this. Like that's just how I am. So I think once you establish the way that you need to learn, know that we have resources for every single way that you are. Like if you are green and you deep, you do need to know all the information. There's a button in your eSuite called document library that has a description of every single thing that you need to know. Um, eSuite is literally green heaven. There's a button for every th single thing. Like if you need to know the ingredients or you need to know this or where it's going or what percent commission or the compensation plan, like it's there. But if you're not that way, you know, maybe you're somebody that's a visual learner and you really need to know all that information, but you need to see it a different way. There's YouTube and YouTube is literally endless trainings of just ways to help you be successful. If you're not green like me and you just need to figure out, you know, how to make money and not, not necessarily how to do it, but like how, like how you can like push for it. Um, that's just really establishing that color language of how you learn best and what you need to do, because I don't need to know any details whatsoever, but you may need to. And if that makes you learn better then just know that the resources are there. I love so much that you just hit on like knowing where your resources are. Cause I think that sometimes that's just the missing piece. You know, we can get in freak out mode, but when we realize like, okay, I can get on YouTube and find that, or I can log in my eSuite and find that. It just makes it so, so simple. Um, okay. So I've heard a little bit of your story, but my team has it. Can, do you mind sharing with everybody about just, um, just like some of your biggest lessons you feel like you learned in your business, like in the middle period? Yeah. So I went diamond in five months and I had the diamond walk and I was like, Ooh, like I'm diamond. I'm so rich. Like I am the top 1%. Like I just felt like I was on top of the world. Um, and I was 18, you know, with hardly any bills making over $2,000 a month. Like I was just really comfortable and I moved into college and I'm really not good with change at all. And, you know, I went through relationship issues. I went through just me making that transition from high school to college. Like just all this stuff seemed to happen at once. And I chose to put this business on the back burner and I, I made this a plan B essentially, you know, I was focusing on school, you know, trying to stay afloat. I was majoring in nursing at the time. So I knew I had to make good grades if I actually wanted to be a nurse. And so I was literally just basically thinking about every single thing other than this business. Um, because it started going down. You know, my volume started dropping. My team started quitting. I had two girls that had joined this business from high school with me that decided to quit. And I was like, Oh, like if you're not going to do this business then like, who's going to do it with me? Um, we had team zooms and literally like two people would show up. And so I was like, okay, like I'm just going to stop doing them because people aren't showing up. And so I went through this whole angry leader stage where it was everyone else's fault, but my own. 
and I stopped holding myself accountable and I stopped working because my team wasn't working and I started copy and pasting posts because I wasn't willing to take the five seconds extra to make my own and I literally just stopped working this business how I should have in all of the ways that I got to Diamond in the first place. Um, and so I lost rank from, I, I maintained rank from May to August and I lost it in August when I got to school. And I maintained executive August, September, October, November, December, January. And conference came around that February. And I went to Jade Hooper. She's number three. If you don't know who she is, go to her YouTube channel and it'll change your life. Um, I went to her and I was like, how do I get diamond back? Like every single month I'm trying to get diamond back and it's not going anywhere. And I'm enrolling like 20 plus. I mean, I was enrolling. My enrollments never stopped. I really don't know how, because I like was not intentional with it whatsoever, but I was fighting so hard to get diamond back, but not in the right ways, not in the ways that if I would have just led, if I would have just showed up, if I would have just done the things that it took to get to diamond and me not trying to do it all myself. I was enrolling these customers and my paycheck was still dropping. And so I was like, I am literally so defeated trying to get my rank back that I have already reached before. And she was like, just get your double diamond chart out. Like, I don't know why this is so difficult for you. Like, if you want to go to that next level, just get your chart out and get it done. And it was like the simplest thing, but I'm so red that I was like, oh, okay, like, I'll do it. And so we went to conference and I caught the conference bug for the first time and was like, oh, okay. And so I maintained Diamond that very same month, every single day after conference, like I was up late, I was working with my team. I got charts out for the first time, get your freaking chart out because that was my biggest regret um, because I kept, it was almost like a mental block because I knew, you know, whether you've lost rank from Ruby or Emerald or whatever it is, you know, you've already met that point before. So the idea of trying to get that back, you're, you feel defeated from the very beginning because you know you've already, you've already got there. So if you're trying to get that back, that your mind is already capped to that point. You know, everything that you've done to get to that point is where you are. And in order to grow, to get past that point, you've got to work towards the next goal. You should never, if you're trying to maintain diamond, never re-get a diamond chart out. You know, you've already promoted to that. So, I mean, obviously, unless you're completely starting over, but, you know, don't just keep staring at the same thing you've already achieved or you'll never get to that point again because who wants to promote to something you've already done? It's not exciting. But when I got that double diamond chart out and I started believing again and I started doing the things that it took to get to diamond by leading and getting charts out and showing up for those team zooms, even if two people showed up and not my entire team like I wanted them to. And I posted stuff in the chat, even if no one responded and I kept showing up for them, people began to show up for me because you're not going to have a team that shows up for you if you're not willing to show up for them, even when it's not easy. And so that was really just the biggest thing that I went through in my business of not maintaining for so long because I got comfortable. That's where it all, that's where it all crashed and burned was when I got comfortable with where I was. And I was like, oh, you know, my team will just do it. Your team will never just do it. You always have to be leading from the front. You always have to be the, the highest enroller, the person that's showing up, the person that's doing the Zooms, the person that is not only saying you need to be messaging 100, but I'm messaging 200. You know, you need to be following 100 people every single day, but I'm doubling that because that's, that's what leaders do. You know, they lead from the front and they're doing more than what's expected of them because you're never, ever, ever going to get in trouble or not make enough or not do this if you're, not, if you're doing more. Like, don't be mediocre. Don't just do the bare minimum to get to where you want to go. Because if you're doing more, you're going to be producing more results and getting a stronger team and a team that sees that you set the bar high. So that was really just a big, big part of my story that I share a lot with people just because not everyone that's at the top or working their way to the top or that's, you know, VIP or VIP lead or any, anybody that you look up to, it wasn't easy. It was not a straight shot to the top. It wasn't, you know, all rainbows and butterflies to get there. It wasn't like every single one of us have a part and like maybe they didn't lose rank, but something happened. People left, people quit that they never thought would, you know, lots of things happen, but it's the matter of you getting right back up and figuring out what was the problem and being solution minded. If you have a problem with the way you're messaging, if you can't enroll, if your team isn't working, if you can't seem to enroll distributors, that's the problem. But where is the solution? What are you going to do to fix that? What are you going to do to rank up? What are you going to do to produce more results? What are you going to do to get out of the position that you're in right now? Because maybe you lost rank. Maybe you're stuck at a rank and you're trying so hard to get to the next one. Whatever it is, figure out the problem. And if you can't find the problem, make sure you're, you're pointing the finger at yourself sometimes. Because that was my biggest issue. I pointed my finger at my team for so long and said, you this, you that. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. 
when all the rest of my fingers were pointing back at me. Oh my gosh. I don't know about everybody else, but I literally had the chills while you were telling that story, Cheyenne. Seriously, like you're just such an inspiration. I just, I just love how real you are about everything that you've gone through. Okay. So you're, you're way more humble than I would be, but just go ahead and tell everybody how fast you went from maintaining the rank of executive to presidential. So I was, okay. So I maintained Ruby actually in January and I made a $412 check. Okay. Um, well, I don't even think it was $400. I think that's with fast start bonuses. So, um, $400. Okay. In January. I maintained diamond that February and saw my first $2,000 check again. And I was like, Oh man, like I am so thankful. I didn't give up on all those months that I fought so hard to get it back because that felt so good. The very next month I went double diamond and I saw a $5,000 plus paycheck. Three months later, I went triple diamond, you guys. And I saw a very above average triple diamond check. So literally that's, January to February, March, April, May, June, July. In six months, I went from making $400 to over $10,000. And three months later from that, so within eight months or nine months, I went from making $400 to $25,000. Literally because I decided I was tired of not ranking up. I was tired of not maintaining. I was tired of not being where I was before and not getting past that. So I literally ran with the momentum. I ran with the conference fire and went from literally $400 to $25,000 from January to October. I love this so much. And I put this all in the chat, you guys, in case you were confused about anything she was saying. $400 <laughs> to $25,000 plus. Dollars. Oh my gosh. Okay. I just love so much like your story in particular, because I feel like it's, such a, it's just such a good example of what can happen when we flip that switch in your, in, in your mind. Um, Okay. Next uh, question I had for you is just, you know, obviously we're, we're in the last month of rank up bonuses right now. What would you say to someone who maybe has kind of fallen off their horse? Maybe their team, they had people on their team quit, or maybe they had people on their team that never were working to begin with. And they've just been trying to drag them along this whole time. And they keep saying, Oh, I'm going to get back on. I'm going to get my fire back. I'm going to do what I need to do. But then when it comes down to really putting that to action, you know, they're just still right where they were. Um, what would you say to them right now about just like what's at stake and like what it's going to take to, to actually get back? Because we all know you can talk about getting back on your horse all day long, but it's a whole nother thing actually putting that in action like you did and doing that. So I actually did a team training on Sunday that I uploaded onto my YouTube channel, which all my trainings, how I got to where I am, like all my tips are all on there. Like I said, YouTube is a resource that you have, so use it. Um, but I definitely recommend after you get off this Zoom, if y'all don't have anything planned, but go watch my, um, I don't remember what I titled it, something about promotions. It's the last video I uploaded. And I think that'll help a lot of you that are pushing for promotions. But maybe, you know, this month you're farther than you want to be, or you have been pushing for that promotion for a long time, or you've been dragging along those people that don't work. Guys, I went double diamond with maybe one or two people that were even enrolled anything. My diamond promoted and enrolled three greens on the go. The emerald maybe enrolled 10 customers. Like I, before I went double diamond, I had never enrolled over 19 customers. And when I went double diamond, I enrolled 80 customers and 69 of them were 80 plus BB. And a lot of you are like, oh, well, that's like, you know, people like that do that are unicorns or people that do that have some special talent. No, guys, you think about it. Every single customer you enroll is the same conversation you had every single time you enrolled a customer. It's just the amount of people that you're willing to talk to. I was over hell or high water promoting to Double Diamond. I didn't care how many people I had to talk to, even if I literally threw a Blitz card in the Walmart parking lot. Like I was going to get those customers enrolled and I was talking to every single person that I could. So it's literally how much harder am I willing to work than you? That's literally all it comes down to when it comes to you deciding that you're going to promote. And I said that, you know, talking about it in my promotion slide or my promotion Zoom of just... What are you not doing that you need to be doing? And after your call to action, after you get off this Zoom, is to go to somebody that is the next rank above you. Not, you know, VIP where you want to be, not ambassador. If you are Ruby, go to an Emerald. If you are Diamond, go to a Double and ask them, what is your daily six list so that I can make sure I'm doing what I need to be doing every day? What did you do every day that got you to Double Diamond? If you're a triple diamond, go ask a presidential, what did you do every single day to get to presidential diamond? Yeah, it may not have just been in that month, but what did, like, what did you do every single day to get to you to, to that rank of where I want to be? Because 
sometimes we're not doing enough. Sometimes we're like, oh yeah, like I'm working so hard. Like I'm messaging this many people. If it's not producing results, you're not doing enough or you're doing something wrong. And it's always, you got to figure that out. Like I said, you find the problem, come up with the solution. If something's not working, be willing to change it. And for as far as people not working and not pulling their weight, I, Kelsey Thornton said this to me the other day and I was like, okay, <laughs> wow. She was like, how dare you tell somebody, you know, you aren't working or you're not pulling off this Ruby promotion. Like you're supposed to be this Ruby. Like how dare you decide what they want to do or what they need or how much money they need or, you know, you sitting there telling them that they need to go Ruby or they need to do this or, you know, all of that. It's your promotion at the end of the day and you enrolled them to help them. But if they don't want it, it's your promotion. So if you have someone that's executive on your charter or Ruby or an Emerald or whatever, and they're not pulling their weight, find somebody in those legs that are willing to, because I, you know, I sat on zoom last month at the end of the month, watching two girls that I honestly doubted going diamond because they were so far and they banded together with two people on their charts that were working and pulled in a ridiculous amount of volume. It was 1500 from 8 PM the night before the end of the month. And for a diamond, that's a lot of volume. And so if you sit there and you just find those few people on your team that are working and stop being so selfish and putting the focus on the people that aren't working, look at your chart and tell me that the people that aren't working don't deserve more recognition than the amount of time that you give the people on your chart that don't work. I mean, how many times do you look at your diamond chart and say, oh, wow, like this person is working and I'm just so excited because it's just this one person. No, you look at all the other people on your chart that you're pissed off about because they're not matching your, they're not pulling with you. Why do you give them so much time? Because in the time that you're giving them all of that recognition, you could be giving the recognition to the people that deserve it. Because I can't tell you how many times I was so mad at my diamond chart and looked over those two people that showed up to that work Zoom that I was hosting or got on my team Zooms, but I was pissed off at all the ones that didn't show up. And that's why I sat at where I sat for so long because I couldn't look at the positives. I only looked at the negatives and I kept sulking and sulking and sulking and all of the stuff that I kept saying over and over and over of all the things that I hated. But it was all a decision of me saying, okay, I'm gonna work with this one person running with me and I'm gonna you know, look in my downline orders and see who's enrolling and text them and say, hey, I'm ready to lock arms with you, like, let's go. Because literally, the, I mean, I've heard so many people say it. I mean, you used to only need five people to go ambassador with you because there were five legs, but you can literally have just a few people running with you the entire way to ambassador diamond because I want you to think about that. You know, I have thousands of people in my downline and I have maybe like 30 diamonds at this point, 30 diamonds and above, but look at the impact those 30 people made out of the thousands of people in my downline. It takes one person to completely change your business. So don't overlook those people on your chart because you're wasting so much time on the ones that don't deserve a single second of your time. Oh my gosh. Preach, Diane. Yeah. Seriously, I, I love so much that you hit on like stop focusing on the wrong things. Stephen Furtick has a quote that I love and he says what you track increases. And so like if you're constantly just focused on the negative, the five people that aren't working, you're like you said, you're missing the one that is. And it's kind of the same thing. Like if you have a bad day and you're focused on the fact that you got no customers, well, guess what? You're just going to keep getting no customers tomorrow and the next day and the next day um, rather than focusing on what you did accomplish. So I just love so much that you hit on that so strong because I feel like that is just the missing piece in so many people's heads. Um, okay. I know that we're, um, coming up on time. It, what would be just like your final tip that you would leave with everybody? Um, you know, just whether it's about promoting or mindset or just anything you feel on your heart to share with us. So I always share, you know, number one, first and foremost, because people are always messaging people, asking them what the secret sauce is. You know, they're always saying, you know, what is it that got you to where you are? Guys, it's not going to be one thing ever. It's going to be all of the things that you decide you're going to do because, you want to be where you want to be. You know, if you've decided that you want to go ambassador diamond guys, there's less than 200 ambassadors in our entire company of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. Why do you think that there's less than 200 people is because those less than 200 people were willing to do whatever it took to get to where they wanted to be. Brittany just went ambassador diamond, you guys, and she was willing to do whatever it took to get to where she wanted to be. And she didn't come up with excuses. She didn't sit back and not work. She didn't do the most every single day. She did not lead her team because there were people on her chart not working. She didn't quit when she missed a promotion. You know, she kept pushing and got right back up when she fell. That's what it takes to be that less than 200 ambassador diamonds because that number is growing 
ridiculously this year. I mean, this is the year of ambassadors. This is the decade of them. And they're just, I mean, they're literally just waiting with open arms, waiting for ambassador diamonds to come in. So you just have to decide, you know, what you're willing to do to get to where you want to be, because it's literally just a decision. Yes, I may be 10,000 from this promotion. I mean, when I freaking claimed presidential, I was over 20,000 away. And I thought that was so insane. And we did it as a team because it's something I decided. It's something I knew I was going to be working with my team 110% to pull off and that I was going to do whatever it took to get there. Sorry, I was trying to, trying to unmute myself. I love so much that you just really hit on that. Like you have to be willing to do the things that other people aren't willing to do. Cause I just feel like that, that so often is, is just something that people just don't fully understand. It's like, it's really easy to see someone's social media and just be like, oh, everything must come easy, but you don't see all the work that goes in behind the scenes. Um, I saw a quote several months ago and it said, the, ma the magic you're looking for is in the work that you're avoiding. Um, and that's something that has just like stuck with me ever since I saw it because it's so easy to, like you said, get so caught up and like, oh, what does this person do? What does this person do? Um, when in reality, like we all do pretty similar things. Like the people you see that are successful, you know, everyone might have their own spin on things, but everyone does the same things over and over. So um, thank you so, so much, Cheyenne, for getting on here of and course. sharing with us. I know it was so last minute, but we just appreciate you and love you so, so much. Um, and I know that, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the chat, but I know everybody feels the same way. Um, we're all just so grateful for you taking your time for us. And if we can ever do anything for you and your team, just let us know. Good luck, guys. Bye. We're cheering you on, too. Thank Ambassador, you. May 2019 is happening. Thank you. Love you. Bye, y'all.